In physiology, dead space is the volume of air which is inhaled that does not take part in the gas exchange, either because it remains in the conducting airways, or reaches alveoli that are not perfused or poorly perfused. In other words, not all the air in each breath is available for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Mammals breathe in and out of their lungs wasting that part of the inspiration which remains in the conducting airways where no gas exchange can occur. Benefits do accrue to a seemingly wasteful design for ventilation that includes dead space. Carbon dioxide is retained, making a bicarbonate buffered blood and interstitium possible. Inspired air is brought to body temperature, increasing the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, improving O2 uptake. Particulate matter is trapped on the mucus that lines the conducting airways, allowing its removal by mucociliary transport. Inspired air is humidified, improving the quality of airway mucus. In humans, about a third of every resting breath has no change in O2 and CO2 levels. In adults, it is usually in the range of 150 milliliters. Dead space can be increased by breathing through a long tube, such as a snorkel. Even though one end of the snorkel is open to the air, when the wearer breathes in, they inhale a significant quantity of air that remained in the snorkel from the previous exhalation. Thus, a snorkel increases the person's dead space by adding even more airway that doesn't participate in gas exchange. Components the total dead space is the sum of the anatomical dead space plus the alveolar dead space. Anatomic dead space Anatomical dead space is that portion of the airways which conducts gas to the alveoli. No gas exchange is possible in these spaces. The normal value for dead space volume is approximately the lean mass of the body, and averages about a third of the resting tidal volume. In Fowler's original study, the anatomic dead space was 156 plus or minus 28 milliliters or 26% of their tidal volume. Despite the flexibility of the trachea and smaller conducting airways, their overall volume changes little with bronchoconstriction or when breathing hard during exercise. Birds have a disproportionately large anatomic dead space, reducing the airway resistance. This adaptation does not impact gas exchange because birds flow air through their lungs, they do not breathe in and out like mammals. Alveolar dead space Alveolar dead space is some of the volumes of those alveoli which have little or no blood flowing through their adjacent pulmonary capillaries, i.e., alveoli that are ventilated but not perfused, and where, as a result, no gas exchange can occur. Alveolar dead space is negligible in healthy individuals, but can increase dramatically in some lung diseases due to ventilation perfusion mismatch. Calculating the dead space. Just as dead space wastes a fraction of the inhaled breath, dead space dilutes alveolar air during exhalation. By quantifying this dilution it is possible to measure anatomical and alveolar dead space, employing the concept of mass balance, as expressed by Bohr equation. Where is the dead space volume and is the tidal volume, is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood and is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the expired air. Physiological dead space The concentration of carbon dioxide in healthy alveoli is known. It is equal to its concentration in blood since CO2 rapidly equilibrates across the alveolar capillary membrane. The quantity of CO2 exhaled from the healthy alveoli will be diluted by the air in the conducting airways and by air from alveoli that are poorly perfused. This dilution factor can be calculated once the CO2 in the exhaled breath is determined and then measuring the mixed gas in the collection bag. Algebraically, this dilution factor will give us the physiological dead space is calculated by the Bohr equation. In this case, the end tidal sample of gas contains CO2 at a concentration that is less than that found in the normal alveoli. Caution. The end tidal CO2 concentration may not be a well-defined number. Poorly ventilated alveoli do not generally empty at the same rate as healthy alveoli. 
particularly in emphysematous lungs, disease alveoli empty slowly, and so the CO2 concentration of the exhaled air increases progressively throughout the expiration. Monitoring alveolar dead space during a surgical operation is a sensitive and important tool in monitoring airway function. During strenuous exercise, CO2 will rise throughout the exhalation and may not be easily matched to O blood gas determination, which led to serious errors of interpretation early in the history of dead space determinations. Example, for a tidal volume of 500 milliliters, an arterial carbon dioxide of 42 millimeters Hg, and an end expired carbon dioxide of 40 millimeters Hg, and so anatomic dead space A different maneuver is employed in measuring anatomic dead space. The test subject breathes all the way out inhales deeply from a 0% nitrogen gas mixture and then breathes out into equipment that measures nitrogen and gas volume. This final exhalation occurs in three phases. The first phase has no nitrogen, and is the air that entered the lung only as far as the conducting airways. The nitrogen concentration then rapidly increases during the brief second phase and finally reaches a plateau. The third phase the anatomic dead space is equal to the volume exhaled during the first phase plus half that exhaled during the second phase. Dead space and the ventilated patient. The depth and frequency of our breathing is determined by CHEM receptors in the brain stem, as modified by a number of subjective sensations. When ventilated, the patient breathes at a rate and tidal volume that is dictated by the machine. Because of dead space, taking deep breaths more slowly is more effective than taking shallow breaths quickly. Although the amount of gas per minute is the same, a large proportion of the shallow breaths is dead space, and does not allow oxygen to get into the blood. In breathing apparatus, Dead space in a breathing apparatus is space in the apparatus in which the breathing gas must flow in both directions as the user breathes in and out, increasing the necessary respiratory effort to get the same amount of usable air or breathing gas, and risking accumulation of carbon dioxide from shallow breaths. It is in effect an external extension of the physiological dead space. It can be reduced by using separate intake and exhaust passages with one-way valves placed in the mouthpiece. This limits the dead space to between the non-return valves and the user's mouth and or nose. The additional dead space can be minimized by keeping the volume of this external dead space as small as possible, but this should not unduly increase work of breathing. With a full face mask or demand diving helmet, Keeping the inside volume small, or having a small internal or a nasal mask inside the main mask, which separates the external respiratory passage from the rest of the mask interior. In a few models of full face mask a mouthpiece like those used on diving regulators is fitted, which has the same function as an or a nasal mask but can further reduce the volume of the external dead space, at the cost of forcing mouth breathing. In medicine this is corrected by a ventilator setup check that determines the dead space volume in the ventilator circuit. A smaller volume around the mouth increases distortion of speech. This can make communication more difficult. Free-flow diving helmets avoid the dead space problem by supplying far more air than the diver can use. This makes the whole interior of the helmet effectively fresh air.